Good mythical afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Yala with another video for you. This is 13.2, Protest, Resistance, and Violence. So this is all in the unit for the Union in Peril. So our uh, objectives for this section are you will be able to explain the issues surrounding the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. You will be able to identify the effects of Uncle Tom's Cabin and other resistant efforts. And you will be able to explain the causes and effects of the Kansas Nebraska Act of 1845. So the first thing, uh, the Future of Slave Act of 1850. So this is part of the uh, Great Compromise or the Compromise Act of 1850 that we discussed in the earlier video. Um, so this is, um, first thing is people accused of being a runaway slave could be arrested without a warrant and no right to a trial by jury. Um, southern states, of course, will like this uh, because slaves were considered property. So they're like, if someone took your property, you should just get it returned. A piece of property doesn't need a trial. You know, hey, it's not like my cell phone just kind of walked away. It's kind of how they thought. While the North disliked this, they're like, why am I, re you know, because this law requires them to help catch runaway slaves. And because these slave catchers were constantly disrupting their lives, they'd be, let's say, at the tailor getting a new suit or dress uh, measured. And a slave catcher would come in and, like, grab one of the workers thinking it's a runaway slave, even though you knew that guy since he was, um, you know, since you two were kids. And this really made a more quandary for quite a few of the Americans. So do we obey the law and support slavery, support something I'm directly against? Or do I oppose slavery, don't obey the law, end up in jail? So this became a major issue in the North. So uh, to help rebel against the fugitive slave law, these Northerners begin to send uh, enslaved Africans northward towards Canada because the North was no longer a safe place for the Underground Railroad to operate. So they had to draw, they had to extend it all the way to slavery. And so this Underground Railroad, you know, had all these famous people, Harry Tubman, Frederick Douglass, all these people we already discussed. Um, and then we have Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was written in 1852 by a woman named Harriet Beecher Stowe. Um, and what what this book does, it was a novelization of the average life of a slave in the South. And it explored these moral issues of slavery in a very dramatic fashion. So the North, the book was extremely popular and became a big push for why they should get rid of slavery. While the South thought it falsely criticized the, the Southern way of life and their reasonings behind the use of slavery. So yet again, we have even more things that are beginning to split the nation apart. So, we get to the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854. So we have Senator Stephen A. Douglas in Illinois suggesting a bill that Nebraska should be split into two, two territories, Nebraska and Kansas. And that slavery in these issues should no longer be settled through the Missouri Compromise. And instead, it should be settled by popular sovereignty, by the people who lived in those territories voting on whether they should be a slave or a free state. The South, of course, is going to enjoy this bill because it's the, you know it gives the I, the prospect of slavery extending pass uh, will pass this bill, and all they really need is a few one or two northern senators to join, and it was easily passed. Because of the passing of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, Kansas turns into this thing that we uh, call Bleeding Kansas. So what ends up occurring because of the ability for people to vote on whether Kansas or Nebraska would become a free or a slave state through the ideas of popular sovereignty, these pro-slavery and anti-slavery forces begin to rush into Kansas to be able to vote. And during the election itself, a whole bunch of pro-slavery forces from Missouri begin to sneak into Kansas to be able to vote, and tilts the vote in favor of making Kansas a pro-slavery state.
or as we would say, a slave state. And because of this, the pro-slavery forces get so excited, they attack the anti-slavery forces at their capital at Lawrence. Uh, we call this uh, the Sack of Lawrence. And violence began to spread all over Kansas. So because of what happened at Lawrence, some of the anti-slavery forces began to attack the pro-slavery forces, and then the pro-slavery forces would again attack the anti-slavery forces. And then you have this gentleman named John Brown, who went around and actually took people out of their plantation homes and uh, shot them right in the head and just left Kansas, uh, left and did it to the plantation over or next door. So violence began to spiral kind of out of control in Kansas. And the violence even began to spread to Congress when a anti-slavery uh, senator known as Charles Sumter uh, ends up becoming being beaten on the Senate floor with a floor, excuse me, with a cane because of his anti-slavery um, ideas, because of how he spoke about how the evils of slavery. So, because of bleeding Kansas and the violence there, and the beating of Senator Sumter, um, the brand new Republican Party will become stronger and stronger and stronger.